what's good everybody this is jack from the bliss life hope you are doing well it is monday the 9th of oh my god no the 7th of march so today i'm going to be talking to you about palantir and its run for the fdic rpp competition so everybody has been focusing about this for the last few months as long as i can remember people have been talking about this big competition that the fdic was holding which started with about like 14 competitors and finally got to four competitors and now they're in the proposal writing phase where they can see if these companies can work together and come up with a really good solution for the fdic and um I'm trying to give you a quick update. I'm trying to find out what's going on because right now, the last time I heard about this competition was that the chief innovation officer resigned. So when that happened, everybody was like, well, you know, what's going on? Is this, uh, is this project shelved? And thanks to TJ Evans on Twitter, so props to you, TJ Evans, we've been able to find out that the project is not dead that's all we know so it hasn't been shelved maybe it's on hold but we've heard from the chief deputy innovation officer the deputy chief innovation officer uh, that the project is still ongoing now why does everybody care about this fdic rpp competition the reason why they care is because this development or this competition was really dedicated to the community banks in the u.s and to help them get in compliance to help them have more visibility and ultimately to give a fdic more visibility why does the fdic care because the fdic is one of the insurers for the cash that's deposited in the banks and they want to have better integration with all of the community banks and imagine how hard it is to oversee and do regulation when it comes to anti-money laundering when each bank has its own system its own reporting it's just creating a lot of bureaucracy so this is why they created this competition now how big are the community banks in the u.s it's it's huge i'm surprised that there's this many banks in the u.s because in canada it's not easy to create a bank but in the u.s it looks like it really is according to the according to forbes in 2019 there are 4750 community banks with 29,000 branches across the u.s that's crazy so when you see the volume of branches, the volume of banks and the anti-money laundering regulations are in place and the reporting requirements and the visibility that FDIC is looking for, you could see why they held this competition. And in the competition, they mentioned that they are looking for modern technological tools to help financial institutions, particularly community banks, to provide more timely and granular data to the FDIC in a more in a, in a more effective and efficient manner. These tools will help the FDIC gain greater insight into the financial health of these institutions and now allow for more efficient supervising. And this is why the competition was created. Now you might be wondering, well, why are they doing this competition? Or why are we even stressing about Palantir winning? We know they got it in the bag. And the truth is, uh i really feel the same way i feel like palantir is the best choice palantir has been developing anti-money laundering software technologies modules since the paypal days and this has now been used in multinational or international financial institutions and Palantir has a lot of use case evidence. They say they have over 70 use case evidences of Palantir Foundry for anti-money laundering being used, being effective, being efficient. They've also shown that it can cut the cost down by 90% and allow the banks to conclude on their investigations a lot quicker. And, you know, this all stems from back in the day, back, back in the day, before even Palantir was invented, when PayPal was struggling with online fraudsters trying to defraud PayPal. And they developed a solution for that. And they just kept on building on that solution. And it it's, it's has evolved into a module. 
in Palantir Foundry. So now I'm going to share my screen and let's go through some of the drama that we know about so far, uh, which can help, you know, give some insight as to what's going on. So let me make this a bit better. Okay, cool. So this is the website, right? FDIC status as of August 2021. So about six months ago, four companies were selected to submit proposals. Now they went through all of this stage, concept paper, initial prototype, final prototype, and production contract. This is where it's happening. They just said March. So, I mean, this window could be like, who knows? This is March 2021. So this was last year. They're clearly w way behind. But since August 2021, they've entered the pilot prototypes and they say four companies were selected. Now this phase of the project will focus on taking those photo prototypes that have demonstrated significant potential to the FDIC and working with those companies to collaboratively design a pilot for use of that prototype on a small scale because they obviously want to see if it works now in a real life scenario. So in this case, you see that the four contestants that are remaining is Novantas, Palantir Technologies, Pure IQ, and SMP Global Market Intelligence. Now, this is where we're at. But what we do know that's happened, that's created a lot of drama is uh, Sultan Migji. He was the chief innovation officer at uh, the FDIC. He left literally uh, weeks ago. And when he resigned, he gave, he wrote an op letter and he said that the FDIC is living in the stone age essentially that's all he said the living in the stone age they're so resistant to change there's no education no continued education on uh the new technologies of the world uh there's no uh, effort to want to really actively collaborate with private partners even though u.s funding has, is now lower than business funding for r d and, uh, you know, people are living in a vacuum, like uh, all of the older folks that are at the FDIC, they all, they're all speculative against technology. And when you have new talent who are very good and that Sultan has picked out and said, these guys are going to be stars, uh, those stars are often stifled, they're often blocked and their voices aren't being heard. And uh, out of the 10 that he identified, eight have already left. So this is why Sultan left. And I'm going to run through the letter quickly. So here he says, <clears throat> to start, the bureaucracy dislikes change. Efforts to move simple office functions out of the 1980s, such as ditching faxes and snail mail, elicit opposition. As for modernizing regulations, the assumption is that the 20th century rules can be jury-rigged to cover 21st century technology. That's a dangerous view when dealing with fast-paced innovations such as Web3 and artificial intelligence. A more flexible regulatory framework is needed to protect Americans' financial security. And then he gives four uh, areas where they need to improve. First is civil service reform. The federal hiring process does a poor job of identifying and keeping the best candidates. The government must put applied digital knowledge front and center instead of prioritizing government tenure and unrelated qualifications. The second involves education and training. A certain percentage of senior technology leadership should be required to have relevant modern expertise. Rank and file employees should be required to improve their skill set through continuing education. Third, there should be more collaboration with companies and universities outside the Beltway. Over the past 50 years, the private sector has surpassed Washington as the main funder of R&D. While boosting federal spending is an option, those investments will take time to get results. Why not tap the investments and insights of America's tech community? President Joe Biden's admin says America needs at least 500,000 cybersecurity experts. The need for AI experts may be even greater. And the federal government only find them in the private sector. Finally, there needs to be more collaboration with international partners. 
Learning from our friends is, is an essential way to staying ahead of our enemies. Achieving these reforms will require political will. The alternatives to let China build a more advanced financial system while letting it and other hostile regimes increasingly undermine our own. The U.S. cannot afford to throw away its global financial leadership. We should be extending our lead and we're running out of time. So this was Sultan's take. It's very dark. It looks like he was clearly pissed and disappointed that there is so much bureaucracy to get things done. And that's what created a lot of hesitancy for me. I'm like, okay, well, you know, has the project been shelved? And this is where TJ Evans comes in. TJ Evans, you should follow him on Twitter. He does a great job talking about Palantir, work fine, going into the details and sharing a lot of that information on Twitter for investors to uh, learn more about. And I really respect his ability to get in the details and really offer value. You know, a lot of people just talk fluff, but TJ Evans, he's pure facts. He's always working with the facts and I, I really admire that. So in this thread what he what this all started because this more on on the 5th of march it showed up on my feed today but on the 5th of march he said oh look there's a new uh, solicitation from fdic i don't think it's related to the rpp maybe it could be maybe it isn't but it looks interesting for palantir and then i said okay nice i'm wondering the same looks like they scra scrapped uh, the competition the former it leader from fdic said these folks were very resistant to change then he comes back to me and he says, well, I think the resistance to change bit is probably true, but here's the deputy innovation officer replying to me last week saying that the project was at least not dead. Who knows though, a contract for the winner isn't a guarantee either. So he's referring to this where he's asking like, hey, what's going on with the RPP competition? Because it's been silence, you know, radio silence for the longest time. And then here, Zunera Mazar, the Deputy Chief Innovation Officer, she responds and she says, all I can say is the project is not dead. That's that's great. And the fact that she said that means that, you know, it's possible the project's on hold or the project's in development or the project's going through drama and negotiations because there's a lot of drama at FDIC. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Adis, uh, someone, uh, you know, the chairman of the FDIC resigned and that is create, you know, the, when someone at the top resigns, then it's going to create, it's going to create friction. It's going to create a hold or a pause on things. And this is the letter. This is the article from political.com FDIC's GOP chair to resign after partisan brawl, <laughs> man, the U S uh, Jelena McWilliams on Friday unexpectedly resigned, submitted her resignation. She was a Trump appointee. Her departure effective February 4th means that FDIC board member Martin Grunberg will become acting chair. His third stint uh, atop the independent agency that ensures trillions of dollars in deposits at the nation's banks. So earlier this month, I mean, look, uh, why did she leave? Uh, I have no idea. Let's see. Uh, here she said, when I immigrated to the country 30 years ago, I did so with a firm belief in the American system of government. She was born in Yugoslavia in her letter to Biden. During my tenure at the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, the United States then and the FDIC, I have developed a deep appreciation for these venerable institutions and their traditions. It's been a tremendous honor to serve this nation, and I did not take a single day for granted. And uh, that's it. Okay, so... Uh, I guess she, she left, but there's no real reason behind it. Uh, it just seems to be politics. I don't think she pandered to big banks or little banks. I think she tried to do her job and she did it quite well. Uh, the clashes between the clash between McWilliams and Democrats at the FDIC has further inflamed partisan tensions over the usually low key agency. I'm deeply troubled to see the administration support this extremist destruction of institutional norms and unprecedented action to undermine the independence and integrity of our financial regulators. Toomey said in a statement Friday, President Biden should move swiftly to fill the two vacant board seats and interim director Grunberg's seat with qualified individuals who will respect FDIC's tradition of operating free from partisan political inter interference. Of course. Um, and... 
Progressive activists celebrated McWilliams' exits as a victory. The Open Markets Institute and anti-monopoly groups said on Twitter that this welcome news means the FDIC board can get to work, mitigating the risks of too big to fail. Okay, a lot of politics there, but you know, with all this drama, what it means is that there's a lot of turmoil. So it's possible that this project has been put on hold, and everyone's like, "Hold your horses, we're not dropping any money yet." So. Let's look at the contract. TJ Evans said there's a new solicitation. So this could be a new potential contract for Palantir to chase after. So let's go through the details here. He, I opened it. Uh, where was it? Uh, yeah, right here. So what do they say? What's the scope of the project? So they said the background. Okay. The scope of this effort is to establish an enterprise-wide data, data catalog solution. Sounds like it's right up Palantir's uh, alley. So the solution must meet or exceed the following high-level scope. Provide data application and system metadata in a centralized location that is easily accessible and searchable. Check. Enable metadata to be ingested from internal and external data sources. Check. Automate validation of ingested data against defined business rules to automatically process transactions. Done. Easily import export metadata through APIs. Palantir can connect to almost everything. Done. Provide data curation features such as tagging, rating, lineage, and provenance. Absolutely, Palantir can do that. Include capabilities to preview a data set, view data profiles, see user ratings, read user reviews, and curate annotations and view data quality information done enable user self-service but boolean and robust natural language search capabilities across structured semi-structured and unstructured data sets absolutely palantir is very user friendly so this is this looks like it's right up palantir's alleyway um there's a, a few other interesting requirements here too Present intelligence recommendations to users in real time. Refine these recommendations based on past user experiences to improve the search process. Of course, improve system reporting and sharing both ad hoc pre-built reports. Yes. Consolidate existing data catalogs and user interfaces into a single user interface. Of course. Maintain historical data through its life cycle. Yeah. Okay. All of this is something Palantir could do. Okay. I'm not going to keep going through the details. Let's look at how long the project is. Let's see if I can find delivery. I remember looking for it before mm. delivery 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 okay here you go performance period begins may 1st 2022 and runs one year april 30th 2023 governments usually don't do deals beyond one year and this is rarely multi-year if all option periods are exercised and the final expiration date is 2027 so the deal is for five years potentially which if they implement such a critical software to manage all their data catalogs they're going to obviously continue to use it uh so having said all of this is the rapid phased prototype project ongoing competition ongoing yes it is it has been confirmed by miss zunera mazar who is the deputy chief innovation officer at the fdic is the FDIC going and trying to invest in innovation? Yes, they are. They just put out a request for proposal. So that is great. Did Sultan leave and was he pissed? Yes, he did. He left and he was not happy. He even wrote an op-ed on Bloomberg. So that is a, a big deal. You know, a lot of people might be scared to hire this man because they might be like, yo, if he leaves, uh, is he going to go write shit on uh, Bloomberg? <laughs> so people will be hesitant but you know he, he, he i'm sure he's competent enough and he has jobs left and right so with that being said this is my quick video on fdic the project is still ongoing when is it going to get announced nobody knows is it going to be a big deal absolutely it's going to be a huge deal uh 27, private banks uh 4, 000, over 4,000 community banks you know individual brands that's huge so let's see we just have to hang tight and see where it takes us if you're not following my channel and you're interested in palantir definitely hit the subscribe button i'm always trying to provide you facts that can help you make the best decisions so hit the button let's go see you on the next video peace